Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to try and present SEO from the, uh, quite a basic level, um, but I'll also cover quite, some quite detailed points. And there should be 10 minutes at the end for questions. Um, so if you've got any specific detailed questions, then we can go more in depth on specific features. Um, all the slides are available for download, so you don't need to photograph or take any notes about those things. Just the stuff I say isn't written down. Um, <coughs> Probably don't need to cover anything there. I'll jump straight onto this. Um, what is SEO? SEO is anything to do with search machine optimization, which means specifically in our case, always Google. 96% um, of people in Austria search with Google. Um, so you don't have to worry about Bing, you don't have to worry about Yahoo or T-Mobile. There's such small market. If you, if you do everything right for Google, you're going to be covering all your bases. Um, 50 to 80 percent of traffic from every website comes from Google, which means you do have to worry about SEO. Um, if you're not interested in traffic, you're not interested in customers, then you don't need SEO. But if you want more customers, you have to do something. Um, just putting a website on the internet is not going to get any traffic to your website. The only people who are going to come is your grandmother and your friends, but nobody else is going to come. So you have to do something to put, do the marketing to get Google to know about your website and to know that your website is better than any other website out there. Um, this is how many people actually click on any particular position in Google in the search results. Um, so the first position in Google, the top ranked website, gets 30% of all the clicks that come through Google. Um, by the time you drop down to position five, only 5% 5 of the people are clicking on the website that's ranked number five in Google. And by the second and third page in Google, you're only getting one or 2% of people are clicking on any result on this whole page. So you have to be number one or number two, and really you need to be number one. Um, if you want any sort of traffic. So it's really worth to put a little bit of extra effort in to get to the top ranking. Um, and it is possible, no matter what branch you're in, no matter what your competition's like, as long as you're not trying to compete with another brand for the brand term, you can always be number one. It's always possible. Um, and that's what's possible. Um, this is a website that I was looking after for a customer. They were ranked number 150 to 160 in Google. Nobody was finding the website. And after three or four months, they're now up to number seven and still growing. And we just put work in for a couple of weeks, um, optimized everything, made sure everything was perfectly organized for Google. And now they're, for a quite hard term, a term that's very, very hard to be number one, they're already on the top, on the first page since about three months, and they'll make it to number one probably. Another three or four months and they'll make it to number one. How do you do this? Well, first, you have to know which terms you want to actually be number one for. You have to know what your customers are looking for. And that's important. It's not what you think people are going to look for. It's what your customers are looking for. So don't talk to your engineers. Don't talk to the product people. Talk to the people who are actually going to be looking for your product, which means looking at the emails you get from your customers, what words do they use to describe your product. They don't use the technical long terms that, every, that we all use for our own products and that we use with our um, suppliers and stuff for the products. They use words that we wouldn't even think that were possible to look for. Um, so it's really important to drill down and f make a massive list of all the possible words that could be used for your product that people might look for. And then at the end, we take this list and then we filter it to find the words we want to be number one for. Um, what else is there? there? Um, it's really good to brainstorm. Sit down as a group, four or five people, and just write everything up on a whiteboard. What possible words could people look for? Go to Google and look at what people actually, um, look at what Google's delivering for results. When you put in your, your main terms, which websites are coming up at the top of the, the search results. Um, see what your competitors are doing. Um, look at the URLs your competitors have. So you put your, you put your main term in. So, um, Sarnarts Vienna, um, it's a bit of a mixture of German and English I'm going to speak, but if you put in Dentist Vienna in Google, have a look at what your competition is trying to be found for. Which words have they got in the URLs? Which words do they have in their titles, in their menus? And all of these words, you write them all down in a list. Um, have a look at the... Um, if you find good customers, so the people who are number one, number two, and number three in Google, they've put a lot of work to get up there which means they've done research, they found out what people are looking for, they've made sure their websites have this information on them, and they're, they're the people you're trying to beat. Um, so it's, you're trying to find out exactly what they've done right to get to this position. Once you've got all the information, you go across to Google AdWords, 
and Google gives you then the traffic for all the keywords that you've got. You've, you've got your long list now with two or three hundred words. You go to Google AdWords in the keyword tool, in the keyword planner tool. It's a free tool, but you have to enter your credit card to be able to get access to the tool. Otherwise, you won't be able to get into this part of the tool. But all the information there is everything Google knows about what people are searching for in whichever country you want to look for. Um, I don't have a point. Uh, oh, yeah. But, um, you can filter by country on the side here. So we can say we just want to see results for Austria. Or we can say we want all the German-speaking languages. So we put Austria, Germany, and Switzerland in the filter over across here. Um, on the other side here, we can then say we want to, we're interested in desktop traffic or mobile traffic or all traffic. Um, so we can then filter down to the mobile users and say, what are the mobile users actually looking for? Um, mobile users always look for things differently than um, desktop users. And often, and more and more, they're using longer queries than desktop users are using. Desktop users tend to use one and two word queries, and mobile users tend to use three to ten word queries. And that's going to increase as they use the speech search. Um, so um, with Siri on the iPhone, the users speak their query into the phone, so it's a natural language query they're using, and it's very long. And that means if you can find out the queries they're using, you can actually really drill down, or you can just be focused not on, um, not on Dentist Vienna, but Dentist Vienna in the third district. And really written like that, in the third district. And if you can be focused that you're number one for this result, you get lots more traffic than what your competition's getting, because they're, they're trying to focus on really short-term queries. And this is going to change, this is going to improve or increase with time. More and more people are going to use voice search, more and more people are going to use the mobile device, um, and the desktop is going to die, at least for the sort of searches that we're all doing at the moment. Everybody's got a tablet, they've got a phone, and they're using less and less the desktop. Um, even for sales, even for purchases now. Amazon's getting 30% of their sales over a mobile phone. So it's, it's increasing in, in um, importance. Um, what else can we show? Down here is a download button. So you can actually, when you get all your keyword information, download it, put it into Excel, and then you can sort it to find any information that you want from the thing, print out the list. And from this list, you then find the words that people are actually looking for. Um, so you've got a list of two or 3,000 words, or two or 300 words. Um, then you filter it, with this, filter it um, in Excel, find the three or four words you'd like to be number one for, um, find a few variations on these words, and those are the words we're then going to take to the website to optimize our website. Um, a really great feature in this tool, you probably can see it right up the top, is you can actually say get ideas, and with the get ideas, you can actually put your competition's websites into the tool, and it'll tell you which words they're trying to be number one for. And we'll bring all the information down from your competition website, um, all the little keywords you haven't noticed on the website. Google will find them all and rank them then according to traffic. So you can then actually then go in, into the tool here and see, ah, this is, these are all the things my competition is trying to be number one for. Um, and from that, you can get a fantastic list of words where you say, that's what we want. That's where we're going to focus. Uh, Okay. Um, SEO is actually much, much simpler than people think. It's, there are lots of complex things, there are lots of technical issues that you can concentrate on, but to be number one, there's only about two or three things you have to worry about. The right keyword list, which we've just covered, um, and then the titles and the URLs on your website. Um, if, you do, if you do just these three things, find the right keywords and put those in your URLs and in your titles, um, and the title is the thing right at the top of the page on the, in the browser tab. It's not the, the hate Heinz tag on the website. Um, if you do those three things, um, 90%, in 90% of markets, you'll be number one within six months. Um, it always takes, SEO always takes a while. Don't expect to be number one tomorrow. Um, but if you do everything right and you concentrate, you'll be number one within six months normally. Um, the thing with titles, they have to be unique. You have to have a different title on every single page. With WordPress, this is really, really easy. With the plugins we've got now, it's really, really easy to have unique titles on every page. Um, and it is critical. If you have 10 pages with the same title, none of those pages will rank, not one of them. Um, especially the home page has to have a title that's different to every other page and should be focused on your main keywords and not on your company. Lots of people have um, Will Common as the first word in the title on the start page, on the home page, which means you all want to be number one for Will Common or start page or hello. Um, 
you want your main keyword as the first word in your title tag on the, on the home page. If you do this, you've got very, very good chances to be on the first page in Google pretty quickly. Um, the title should be readable. They should be able, you should actually be able to read them as a proper person, as a person. When you search in Google, the 10 results that you get, they're actually using the title from your website as this main tag in the Google, Google search results. And if it's readable, people will click on it. If it's just 10 keywords, one after the other, people look at it and say, spam, can't even understand that. But if it looks interesting, and if it's asking a question or answering a question in the title, um, people will click on it, come through to your website. And if you've got a, that's the last point. The last point is you have to have a good website, but that's not SEO. SEO is getting the people to your website. Having a good website is then the designer's problem. Um, use www for your domains. You've got the option always to have a domain with no, with no www at the beginning or to have it with the www. Everybody, when they create links, create it with the www at the beginning. When they create links on other websites and link to your website, they don't come and look how have you written it. They just always naturally, and 99% of the time, links have www at the beginning. And if you don't have, your, have this on your website, the website will have to redirect to the correct start page. And a redirect always costs you link juice, costs cost you energy from Google ranking. Um, you lose 10% of your ranking automatically if, you're not, if you haven't got the same website name as what the links that are linking to you have got. So I always do that. It's so easy. Um, it's a little bit longer, but everybody's, and what the people type isn't important, it's how they link. Yeah. Um, probably at the end, if you can, if you can remember. Um, okay, we've got the right titles. We've got the, uh, the, to put the keywords in your URL is also important. Don't just say contact, say contact Vienna. Um, so when you're talking about your company, probably pop back. Um, when, you, when using the keywords, also use them in the URLs for your pages. Don't say about us, say about Sign Arts Vienna, um, about Dentist Vienna. Um, when you write the, the name of your page, it's a contact page, write the contact and then the name of the city that you're in. All little things like this will help you to rank number one for the place where you're trying to be number one. Um, okay, the next most important thing is then how fast your website is. And this is really, really important for Google as a ranking factor. The faster the website is, the higher in the rankings it'll come with all other factors staying the same, the higher in the ranking it'll come. But what's also really, really important is that users have got no patience anymore. And they're getting more and more impatient. They want everything immediately. And they've, they've just got to hit the back button and they'll be back into Google with 10 other, or nine other answers that have got the same information you've got. You have to load within three or four seconds. Um, Google, uh, Amazon found out that 0.1 second made three or four percent difference in how much people bought. So they, they increased their sales at millions of dollars a month just by making the website two or three tenths of a second faster. And so Google really, really concentrates on that. They reduce the JavaScripts really small, they reduce the, um, the images to the smallest size possible, um, and everything should load slowly, so it's load only when the user needs it. Don't load massive images. <laughs> If it's, not, if it's not necessary. Load little thumbnails, and then when the user clicks on the thumbnail and has an interest, then you load the big image. But don't load them when the page is first being shown to the user. Um, there's WordPress plugins that do all of that also automatically. That do this um, lazy load plugins, which load the images just when, so if you've got a long page with 10 images at the bottom, only when the user scrolls down the page, the images will then load. And this makes the website much, much more responsive, much faster. Um, Images are always the biggest problem with performance, at least for the websites I mostly deal with. It's images. People take the images straight from the camera and put them on the website. Two, three, four, 12 megabytes, straight on the website, and then are really surprised that nobody comes on the website or nobody goes to the second page. The bounce rates are just horrendous. Um, images should never be more than 100 kilobytes. That's my rule of thumb, and it's, even with really, really good quality images, you can always meet this rule. You can always get them down to 100 kilobytes. Um, caching plugins. There's loads of, um, these are the testing tools, but there's loads of great caching plugins. I'll cover those right at the end of the talk, if I get the time. Um, the two test tools there at the bottom show you how fast your website is and show you what's making your website slow and give you then tips exactly what you have to change to make it faster. 
Um, really, really easy to use. Everybody can get the information. You don't have to be a technical guru. It'll tell you this image is too big. This, image, uh, this JavaScript is being loaded twice. Um, this website is really slow. Sometimes you have social media plugins can be a really bad case of making the website slow because they go to Facebook and they try and download how many people have liked your page. And they do this on every single page on the website that people go to. Um, so you'll see two or three seconds being wasted by the Facebook likes being loaded on every page. And if you change your social media plugin to one that's fast, you'll suddenly, be saved, you'll suddenly go from a website taking 10 seconds per page to a website taking six seconds a page and not change anything on the website. Nothing's visually changed. Um, okay, this is really, really important and almost nobody's hearing about it. In 10 days time, Google is changing their whole mobile search but everything. They say it's the biggest change they've ever made in the history of Google, and it's going to affect more websites than any other change they've ever made. Um, it's going to affect more websites than Panda, Penguin, names that people have probably heard, probably don't, didn't worry too much about. But this mobile change is going to affect 40% of all websites are going to lose 30% of the traffic overnight. And it's international, it's rolling out worldwide on this day. Um, so it's really, really important you have a mobile website and it's really important that Google knows you have a mobile website. And this is the biggest thing. Lots of people think, looking at, looking at the website on the phone, looks great, it's mobile, it's, you don't have to scroll sideways, it can scroll, looks, works perfectly. But people have often blocked the, blocked the JavaScript or to block the CSS, so Google can't, can't load the JavaScript down, can't load the CSS down, and then can't see that you've actually got two different versions. You've got a responsive website, but Google can't see it, which means Google says it's not responsive. Um, lots of companies do redirects to a mobile version of the website. So when you come with a phone, you get collected to the M dot website name. And they redirect iPhones, they redirect Android phones, but they don't redirect Google. So if Google, comes, Google has a mobile browser, and this mobile browser from Google, you have to redirect. Otherwise, it's going to say, well, you've only got a desktop version. Sorry, you, you're going to lose all your traffic next week. And this is so important. How am I doing? Yeah. Um, 40% of the top 25,000 websites tested failed the test. And these are the top companies, IBM, um, Wikipedia failed on the start page. Every other page worked, but not the start page of Wikipedia. Um, Google does this though page by page, and it's only mobile, it's not tablet. That's a really important dif difference at the moment. And it is page by page, which means if you have one page that has a massive image that can't be compressed or a big table that can't be compressed, this page will get a bad ranking on the mobile devices, won't be shown on the mobile devices, probably. Um, but if your front page is mobile um, responsive and your contact page, and st the pages where the people are supposed to be coming with the phone are all responsive, then you should still be okay in the most cases. But the tests that people have done will show that at least 30% of the traffic will be lost for websites that don't meet these conditions. The website here at the bottom is a really good place to go and it, you can then test each page individually on your website. The other thing you can do is you can go to Google Webmaster Tools and register your website with Google Webmaster Tools and they'll then tell you for every single page on your website, is it mobile response, is it um, responsive or is it not responsive or mobile, mobile friendly. Um, but like I said, the biggest thing is blocking the CSS and the JavaScript. This is something that WordPress did by default last year, and when you do an upgrade on WordPress, it doesn't overwrite your robots text. And it's, these are actually being blocked in the robots text, um, which means lots and lots of websites think they're mobile friendly. Um, somebody who installs the theme now this year and installs WordPress this year will get mobile friendly robots text. But if you installed it last year, you've probably got a robots text that blocks the WP include directory. And in the WP include directory is the jQuery, which is used for making a responsive website. And it's being blocked from Google, which means Google says the website's not responsive. Um, so you have to test. You can't just say, ah, it looks okay. You've got to go into the test tool and check your website. And at least 100 people, at least 20 or 30 people here have got websites that aren't responsive, even though they think they are. And if you haven't got a mobile friendly website, you've been sleeping way too long. You've got to have a mobile friendly website. 50% of all traffic now is mobile. Um, and the users don't want to scroll sideways. They don't want to um, have massive images where they wait 10 seconds or 20 seconds for their website to load. So you've got to have a mobile, preferably responsive website. 
Um, there are loads of ways to make a mobile website, um, but responsive is the best way or the easiest way. Um, what should you not do? And these are the things that people used to do about 10 years ago, and some people still do them. Um, don't buy links. No matter how good the offer sounds, no matter how cheap they are, I mean, you get 10,000 links for $5, um, and the people will generate them for you in two minutes and give you a list, there you are, 10,000 links, and you can say goodbye to your website as it goes down to the bottom of the list in Google. Um, so don't buy links. Um, Keyword stuffing is something I see with so many of my customers. They've got a title tag, and in the title tag, they've got um, 10 keywords, all one after the other. Looks totally unreadable, and Google knows that. Google is getting more and more intelligent every month, and getting, learning more and more about what things are normal, what things are natural, and what things are unnatural. And if it's unnatural, it won't rank number one. So you have to try and, you have to try and unnaturally look natural. You have to look like you're trying to write normal text and still write all your keywords in there. So it's, it's always a bit of a game. It's always trying to play with the rules. But if you do it correctly, you will be number one. And that's the most important thing. It is really easy, especially if you're not all in the same branch, then it's really easy. If you're all in the same branch, then we're going to have a bit of a difficulty. If you're all trying to be number one for Web Design Vienna or for um, Dentist Vienna, then it's, and everybody knows what they're doing, then it's more complicated. But most people don't know what they're doing and they just run around in a circle or they focus on one little tiny corner and don't look at the whole, whole palette of what you've got to look at. Um, no website is perfect. Even my website, I look at it every week, it's still not perfect. There's always little things you can change, little things you can make better. Um, so it's a never-ending process. You just go round and round in the circle. Um, but if you do it right the first time, then you'll find it much easier when you come back. And you also, you learn what, what's working. You look at one page and it's looking, ranking really badly. Another page is ranking really well. But what did I do differently? This one's got a really big picture. Ah, okay, or the things are ordered differently. Um, so you look around and you find solutions into your own problems. And SEO is about learning. It's always about reading, about talking, and you'll find so much information to help you then get much, a much better result. Um, this is a really, really big problem for online shops, is duplicate content. Online shops are all selling the same product, they're all getting the text straight from the manufacturer for televisions or video recorders or mobile phones. If you can just change the text a little bit, you'll be the only company with this text. Um, you don't have to change every single word, you don't have to write, write a, rewrite a 2,000 word paragraph from zero, just change the order. Just take the product description that's uh, so the um, spec technical specifications that are at the bottom of the list, put them in the middle somewhere. Just change the format a little bit so that for Google, it's a different text to what's on all the other websites. And then you'll rank much better than your competition. Um, there are little tiny things you can always do just to make it a little bit better than everybody else's. Um, there's a tool that has Copyscape. And Copyscape, you can give your website to it and it'll tell you if anybody's copied your website or if you've copied somebody else's website but it'll tell you how often the text of the website occurs on other websites. And this is a really useful tool if you're in a branch where there's not much text on the website and it's important then that your text is unique. Um, links. This, this is, there, are, there are three areas for a website to make it strong. It's having the right keywords, it's having the right on-site SEO, so the text on the website, the URLs and the titles, and there's the off-site SEO, there's your links. And links are critically important. And they're so easy to get. The main links, the links that actually will bring you to number one, are all easy links to get. They're all free, um, and they don't take any time to find. Um, you go to the professional organisations. So as a doctor, you go to the doctors, the Asta camera. You go to the Bitchoff's camera if you're um, self-employed. Um, you, you get a Google Maps entry. It takes 10 minutes to create one, um, and it gives you a massive ranking on mobile phones especially, because when people search on a mobile phone, if they search for doctor or dentist, it's automatically a local search. Google will give results. If I search right here in this here, I'll get doctors and dentists in the Beringer Strasse. I'll get doctors right here. Google will say, oh, you didn't put it, but I know where you are. Then I'll give a local search. And if the doctor here has a Google Maps entry, that'll be the number one entry in Google, guaranteed. Because it'll be the nearest to where the person is at the time when he's searching. Um, this, everybody says directories are useless. Um, I'll show you in a second that they're not. Um, but there are directories like Yelp and Herald, Tupelo, they're all free, and they're really, really, they give a really good ranking boost. Um, Yelp is what's used on the mobile phone from Apple, 
Um, so that's used on the, Google, on the Apple map program. Instead of the Google Maps, they use the Yelp for the, um, the maps on Apple. So you want to have a Yelp by entry, and you want to make sure that your address is correct, your telephone number is correct, <coughs> and that you've got your website address in there. So many customers I go to, they've got entries like, they've got a, the Bitchef's camera, they've got an entry for their company, but there's no website in there. How are, people, how are they supposed to get a ranking boost for their website when the website URL they've forgotten to copy it in? Or it's the old URL, and the old URL isn't redirected to the new company name. They've changed, they've been bought out, or they've changed the URL to make it something a bit more focused on their product. Um, but they haven't redirected the old website to the new one, and they haven't fixed all their old links that they made two or three years ago. Um, and this is how you find links that work in your domain. Take your competitor's URL, um, if I can do this, I'll pop across. Um, take your competitor's URL and put it in Google, but put it in inverted commas. So I've taken here a taxi company in Vienna, and we say we're a taxi company, we'd like to get good links for taxis. And we just go down the list here, first we find the company itself, and then we find the links that Google says are really, really good. The further up in the list the links are, the better the links are for Google. And we find Facebook, it's a free link. Go to your Facebook page and put your URL for your company in there. You'll get a fantastic link. We find Herald, we find Fearman RBC. They're all free places to get links, and they're the best links according to Google. So you go and get them. Um, if, you make, if you make 50 to 100 links for your website over about two or three weeks, you'll rank number one. Your website will just take off. Um, go back to where I was. Gonna work? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, plugins for SEO. Um, there are hundreds of plugins. There are thirty or forty thousand plugins for WordPress. Most of them aren't that good. Um, and the, the thing is to filter the bad ones from the good ones. Um, Yoast SEO is, in my opinion, the best. Um, there are two or three other ones which are good, but Yoast is by far the best and the easiest to use. Um, you need a caching plugin. W3 Cache is good. Caching, it's much, you have to really try the caching plugins to find which one works with your website. Um, depending how the theme is set up, depending how the website is structured, some caching plugins will break everything. Um, some are a real pain to configure. Um, and it's a place where you can spend lots and lots of time. Always test. Check your website before you start, how fast is it? And by every single change, retest it. And if you decide you don't like the plugin and you delete it, retest that you've come back to where you started and not that you've got somehow worse off than where you were. Sometimes the caching plugins will um, create, make changes in the database or other changes that you might actually need to go back to an old backup of your website. Um, which brings us to backups. Always make a backup. So many people don't have no backup of their website. Um, plugins like the one I recommend there, they do an automatic backup for you every day, every week. Um, and save these either on Dropbox, save them um, on your own server, wherever you'd like, send them by email. Um, you've got to have a backup. At some point, you're either going to get hacked or you're going to make a mistake or something that your host is going to die and you need a backup to be able to recover your website. It is your business. It's, it's probably worth hundreds of thousands of euros a year. Um, if you lose your website, you're probably going to lose your company. So you've got to make sure you back it up. And I know every customer I go to has no backup plan has no old copies of a website. Nobody. And I go to five to 10 customers a week, and I don't think I've ever met a company that has a backup planner for their website, or a, a reliable, regular backup. They've got the original CD they got from the web designer, and that's it, that's all they've got. And it's two or three years old. Um, so please, make backups. Um, if you've got an international website with multiple languages, those are the two best plugins that I've found. Um, Polylang is if you're doing your own translation, your own, um, and you're making individual pages for every single language. Polylang is fantastic. It makes it so easy to create the menus, to create the pages, to link the pages to each other, so that when you navigate from a deep page on one language, you go to the same page in the other language. Um, and Transposh, if you're, if you're lazy and you just want another language, unbelievable how good it is. You make a website in one language, install the plugin, say I want 20 languages, and they're all there. And the translation, the automatic translation is amazing. 
And what's really amazing is you can actually then individually by phrase or by text change text anywhere on the website and this phrase or text will then be changed everywhere it occurs on the website will be corrected with your new term. If you say, oh, it's not Geiger, it's violin, then this will be changed across your whole website automatically in the new language. And if you've done an English website and you want a German website with no effort, do that, you get menus, you get um, the titles are created automatically for Google, so your website's then found in the new language. Unbelievable how good it works. Um, it's probably not good if, you, if you're making millions of euros a year from your website, it's probably not to recommend, better to do, a, um, do the polylang and translate yourself. Um, but if it's just a small blog, then you can then reach people in another language really, really easily and have no extra effort and rank for other terms in Google, get more traffic. Um, what I talked about before was um, when I said you change the URLs and put the keywords in the URL, that means you're changing the structure of your website. That means you're changing from having contact to having contact Vienna. Um, you then need to redirect the old pages to the new pages because you've probably got links to the old pages. Um, Google knows the old pages, so you need to do a 301 redirect, it's called. Um, and this tool makes that really, really simple. It'll actually go and find most of them for you and correct them finds the, 40, the 404 pages that don't have a link and says, uh, would you like to make 301 redirects to a, the correct page for these ones? Um, Google Analytics is then you have the Google Analytics direct in WordPress because it's so important to look at your analytics and nobody does it. It's so, it's so tiresome to go and log into a new program and just check out what's going on. With this tool, you see it right on your start page when you come into your website every day, then you see straight away how much traffic have I got, what's working, which pages are being visited, which pages aren't being visited. What can I change? Um, okay, and then Google. Ah, yep. Google's got so many free tools. Really, really good tools. Google Analytics, everybody's got to use an analytics program. Um, there are a few analytics programs. If you don't like giving the data to Google, there are some you can self-install and self-manage. But for most people, that's too much effort. Um, take Google Analytics, it's got great tools. It gets better every month. Um, it's all free um, and very, very easy to use. It lets you then track things like how many people have downloaded a particular product, how many people have clicked on a link from one page to another, how many people have submitted emails in your newsletter, and where do these people come from, which countries. If you match that up then with Google Webmaster Tools, you can actually even then find out which, what did people search that they then went and clicked on my newsletter. Um, so you can actually see which search terms are work, working and bringing you traffic that's actually converting. And that's, that's getting a little bit deeper into what's useful. Um, but there's so much information there. If you've got the time, dig into it. Um, Google Webmaster Tools. Everybody has to use Google Webmaster Tools. This is how you find out everything Google knows about your website from the search side. Um, how many pages are indexed in Google, um, for what terms are they indexed, what rankings do they have in Google, more or less. It's all the information that used to be in Google Analytics is now in Webmaster Tools. Things like which keywords are being searched for most often um, and which, what people are looking at for the particular keywords, which ones have actually been clicking onto my website. So I can see how often I occur in the search and then from the people who saw my link in Google search, how many people actually clicked on the link. Because um, then I can then see which things are worth to optimize a little bit more. Maybe this one, one word I think is my favorite word and it's being seen 100 times a month and being clicked two times a month. And something that I didn't even realize, it's way down the list, there's 20,000 people seeing it, and two people clicking it because I'm ranked too badly. Then I know for this term I need to rank better, or if I do rank better, then I'll get these 20,000 people, might, a, a percentage of them will come to my website. Um, if I rank number one, 30% of these 20,000 people will come to my website, which is nice, that's what I want. Um, the speed test and optimization, Google will tell you what's wrong with your website from performance. It'll tell you exactly which JavaScripts are too slow, which um, images are too large. I find the other two tools I linked before better, um, but a lot of people like this and a lot of people like to compare the values and say, oh, my website's got a ranking of 98 in Google. Um, there's a talk later about performance where they'll go into more detail about this sort of stuff. Um, but never ever lose sight of your performance. You have to check it all the time because all the time you're making new blog posts, you're changing little things on the start page, um, and if you don't look at it all the time, you'll suddenly find you put a, put a bad image on the, in your blog on the start page and not ranking anymore. Okay. The rest I'll skip over. You can down, like I said, you can download the notes from the internet so you can get all of these things. 
because um, we've run out of time. Um, Google has a great guideline for SEO. Google loves SEO. They, they don't always say it, but they produce the best ever guidelines for SEO, 30 pages of perfect information, perfect examples. Like I said, you can download all of this, so it's, don't need to copy it down. Um, but Google's guidelines, they were written in 2008 or 2007, but they're still true. They're the, they're the, the basics that I talked about, they're still true. They're fantastic. Um, and that's it. Hopefully you've got a few little points to help you further on the road to success. Any questions? And if people want, I'll be available then after the talk outside if anybody's got a particular question about their website or anything particularly technical. There was a question here, right? Thanks. So um, I was wondering, with a normal redirect, right? So you lose a little bit. Yep. Right? But don't you think Google has this figure out for the www? Like they don't apply the penalty for this because it's actually a, a, like a subdomain, but it's not a subdomain, so you would expect them to treat it in a different way? The problem is they look at the links are on external websites. When it's on your website, they treat it like this, but they're coming from external websites. It's probably not the same penalty as when you get um, a real redirect from one domain name to a different domain name, but it's certainly not the same value as having the correct link. Um, and it's, it's such a small thing to change, there's no reason not to do it. Okay. Uh, and I have one more suggestion, because we also have the picture problem, like yeah. people who don't know about that just upload everything, yeah. right? And there are actually a couple of plugins that do that very well, like yeah. uh, you can just put a maximum size, right? And they, uh, they just squash the image to that size. Yep. So the people using their blocks, they don't actually need to worry about that. And we found that works very well because yep. telling people what to do, like usually doesn't work. Yep. No. That's the great thing with WordPress. There are so many plugins and so many good plugins, but always when you, I'll just quickly jump across to yours. There's the, when you download a plugin, always first look at the information on the website. How many people have actually installed the plugin? When was the plugin last actualized? So when was it last updated? Always plugins that are more than a year old tend to be a bit problematical unless they're really, really simple. One of the plugins I recommended for the um, security is actually hasn't been actually act updated in three years because it's so simple. It just does a really simple job and doesn't need to be changed for each WordPress update. Um, look how many reviews it's got and always then go into the reviews and read the last two or three reviews. Because sometimes the last update might have broken something and then you don't want to actually update. So it's, it's always worth, before you blindly install something you read in a magazine or you've heard from me, always check, always be double, double careful. And always on your website, update everything every week. Always go into your, the administration panel and make sure all your plugins and the WordPress are on the, on the latest stand, on the newest updates. Because there are so many security issues popping up every week at the moment. And if your website's actualized, you won't have any problems. You read in the newspaper, WordPress is the most unsafe product that exists, and there's so many new security leaks being found. They're published after they've been fixed, which means if you've updated, you've already, been, you've already patched. You can't, be, you can't be affected by these problems. But there are people who haven't updated things for two or three years, and then of course they're gonna get hacked. And with 20, 30 million websites, how many websites WordPress? 23% of the web. Yeah, I mean, there are so many websites that are going to get hacked because they're just not being updated, they're not being looked after anymore. But if you look after your website, WordPress is the best platform. Any other questions? Uh, could you tell a bit about the process of becoming a Google certified partner? I don't know if... No. No, okay, no. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you about the process. Any more? It's all, it's more AdWords. Just have a small question about the uh, language plugin. The yeah. VPML, is it bad or? No, no, it's not bad, but it's complicated. Um, huh? You need a lot more energy to install and to configure this plugin. It's a okay. great plugin. Okay. Um, but it's okay. much more complicated for small companies mm -hmm. um, or one person web design teams, then it's more complicated to manage. Okay. Um, it is, it's got more extensions. It can actually do a lot, a lot better things in some cases. Mm -hmm. But the one I recommended, Polylang, integrates with WooCommerce, so you can do a shop in multiple languages, it's, and it's so much easier. Okay. Um, WPML is great, a great plugin. Okay. Hi. Um, regarding the, the Yoast plugin, um, uh, I use it a lot and it, um, uh, it needs you to set a certain focus keyword uh, per page. 
Um, how do you recommend uh, choosing never, one word? Never. Ignore them. <laughs> Ignore them. Okay. That's, that's an automatic tool. Um, that's for people who've got no idea what they're doing. <laughs> Using the focus keyword is just going to lead you up the garden path. It's then going to tell you, hey, you haven't got the focus keyword yeah. 10 times on the page. And you, keyword density is, unless you're a guru and you've got really, really special, powerful tools, keyword density is to forget about. Write normal language. I didn't talk anything about the content. I didn't talk about the Haar Eins tags. Don't worry about them. Write them normally, write them for the user, don't write them for Google, and definitely don't worry about keyword density. And That's great like, news, yeah. yeah. <laughs> these things, are, they were, people thought a lot about them 10 years ago or five years ago, um, yeah. but they're getting less and less important, and they'll lose importance more and more. Right yeah, because you get this little red notification that says yeah. you got bad SEO, even yeah. though you got great content, so. Don't worry about it. Okay, thanks. Worry about your title, worry about your URL. Um, everything else will work itself out. If you've written good content, then it'll work itself out. Um, do you feel that Google PageRank is a load of nonsense yes. and mu yes. mul rubbish that's generated it's by been Google? Updated now for one and a half years, and it won't ever be updated again. And the last update was a mistake. The last update was actually an engineer clicked the button and he wasn't supposed to. So the last update should have been about three years ago. Um, it's, a total, it's total rubbish. Um, all new websites have got a page rank of zero and will always have a page rank of zero. Um, old websites that are now rubbish still have page ranks of six and seven because it's not being updated. Um, so forget about it. It's, it was a great guideline. What's really good now is from Moz. Moz is an SEO company that have their own free tools and they have a thing called MozRank. And that's act, act, updated every single day um, based, it's, it's a little bit better for America and for English speaking languages, but it's still really good for Europe. Um, and with MozRank, you can actually get a good idea of which websites are good, which websites are bad. But what does it matter? What does it matter if, I mean, you're not going to go to websites and beg for links anymore. That's not really worth to do. Um, you're not really interested if a website's worth, that was the only reason the SEOs looked at PageRank, was to find websites where it was good to get a, a link from, um, which was all, it was all rubbish. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Bruce.